Hello, my name is Nikolai Yusupov, and in this video, I'd like to show you what a true non rebreather mask looks like and the functions that it has. So first of all, let's start with something basic. This here in my hand is called a simple face mask, which you notice it doesn't have a reservoir bag. And also, if you look at these openings here, uh, there's no one-way valves. So there's openings uh, that connect this to room air. And room air is composed of about 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. So patient is not getting 100% oxygen through this device. Truly speaking, when this device is connected to your oxygen source and you are ventilating this patient at 15 liters per minute, as our regulator is here, when what the patient is getting on this device at 15 liters per minute is about 50% FiO2 or 50% fraction of an expired oxygen when they're getting this device. Now, when we move to another device, here and we connect it to our tank, sometimes this is incorrectly stated as a non rebreather mask. So here, what I'm holding in my hand is incorrectly interpreted as non rebreather mask. And I'll explain to you why this is not a true non rebreather mask. Okay? If you look, yes, I do have a reservoir bag, which is inflated. But if you look at these openings here, right, one has one way valve and the other one is missing it. On the other mask that I held in the simple face mask, both of these were missing. So here, there's only one that's missing. So what's the problem with it? So the first problem is that you're in training room air, which is about 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. But you'll say, well, what's the problem with that? The problem is this. With 15 liters per minute oxygen, this is only able to deliver roughly 70% of fire 2 I repeat it again, 70% fraction of inspired oxygen. And the problem with this is that if I want to pre-oxygen my patient, I'm not getting adequate FiO2 as I can be with a true non rebreather mask. And you will say, well, what's the purpose of this? Well, the purpose of this is it's a safety feature. And they call this a non rebreather mask with a safety valve, right? Or a safety vent. So what happens? Think of it like this. When a patient takes a breath in, right? This valve opens. So the air comes in through this bag, right? As I'm showing you here. However, when I take a breath in, this valve closes. So no room air is in train. But here you still have holes. So the reason why this is a safety feature, let's say you are doing transport on your ambulance and your portable auction runs out. So there's no auction coming in and you're busy uh, doing something. Maybe you're filling out your ACR and you're not paying attention. You have lights and sirens on. So you do not hear that the auction has run out. So the problem with this, as long as the reservoir bag is filled, the patient is getting air, right? But the moment your bag is now empty because the patient has exhausted all the oxygen here, uh, what's going to happen? When the patient takes a breath in, this valve will close. This will open. There's no oxygen here. However, because of these openings here, the patient is still able to get room oxygen, which is 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. So this is a safety feature. If your O2 runs out, the patient will not suffocate to death. But the issue with this is that then it's not delivering full FiO2 as I can be. So FiO2 with this device, we said it's 70%. Simple face mask was 50. So now let's move over to a true non rebreather mask. So here, let me disconnect this off. Here I have a true non rebreather mask. How do I know it's true non rebreather mask? Well, first of all, I have one way valves right at both ports. None of them are left open, right? So when I connect this device to my oxygen source and I'm gonna run it at 15 liters per minute, And we fill the reservoir bag. Okay. When it's fully filled. And we place this on our patient. Now, when the patient takes a breath in, you notice I push here. My valve here opens up so the patient is able to get air in. But when I take a breath in, these one-way valves on the side, they collapse. And no room air is entrained into the patient. So this device is able to deliver about 80 to 90% FiO2. So this is also determinant on patients on patients' minute ventilation. So if the patient is taking adequate rate and depth of oxygen uh, during normal breathing, the patient will get about 90% FiO2 with this device. Every time they take a breath in, air goes in through here. They, when they are taking the breath in, no air is going through here. When they exhale, the air gets escaped through these, but nothing gets rebreathed. That's why they call it non rebreather mask. But the issue with this, if your oxygen ran out, right, no more oxygen, 
So now the possibility of patient suffocating if you don't notice that your oxygen has run out is high because of these will close and no room oxygen will go in. That's why they started making these devices as a safety feature, but they are not giving you full oxygen. So this will give you as much oxygen as possible. Granted, patient is taking adequate breaths and has adequate rate to generate sufficient minute ventilation. Right, minute ventilation is respiratory rate times tidal volume. And now let's let me move move over to a BVM. So this device here is able to deliver greater than 90% FiO2, and uh, really you could get it to 100% FiO2. So let me connect this uh, to my oxygen source. When can you get 100% FiO2? When you have excellent technique and you are creating excellent seal. So what you want to do is you want to employ the triple airway maneuver. Right, let me turn this on to 15 liters. You want to employ a triple airway maneuver and you want to put the adjunct into the person if they're able to tolerate it, either an OPA or an MPA. By the way, these adjuncts they do not keep the tongue out of the airway, they do not keep the tongue forward. I'm going to repeat it again these adjuncts do not keep the tongue forward. You need to perform a triple airway maneuver to open the airway and lift the jaw upward and create a tight seal and ventilate the patient. Now, what you can also do if the patient does have anti-gag reflex and you wanted to pre-oxygenate them using this device, you could remove right, this diverter, connect your peep valve like so, dial in your peep, and hold this against the patient's face. And the patient will also need right, a nasal cannula device. And you will say, well, why do they need a nasal cannula device? And the reason why they need the nasal cannula device is so that this can generate flow so the patient can sustain right, the air movement in order to pre oxygenate them. So how would you do this? So if I was gonna use this device, I'd put my nasal cannula on a separate tank at 15 liters per minute onto the patient, right? And then I would create a tight seal, perhaps uh, employing my triple air maneuver, holding this in place with my peep valve, right? Adjusted accordingly so that the patient can get appropriate air. Now. Uh, this device can give you greater than 90% FiO2, right, at 15 liters per minute. Now, they did a study uh, in JAMA, and it was titled Flush Rate Oxygen for Emergency Airway Pre-Oxygenation by Driver in 2016. And what they did is they wanted to see if they increased right, your uh, flow of oxygen. So they had oxygen regulators uh, in the hospital. Right, that were able to exceed right the 15 liters per minute. They were able to go above 40, right? And here on my regulator, I can go as high up as 25, right? You see it here. But in the hospital, they were able to exceed to go to 40. And when they went to 40, they were able to pre-oxygenate a patient with a mask like this, right? Uh, that delivered 100% FiO2. So it was just as good as the BVM connected to 15 liters per minute. So if you're working in a service and you need to pre a patient and you do not have a non-rebreather mask like this with both valves, you can employ this device, right? However, what I would advise you to do is, since you know it's only going to give you 70% FiO2, you can increase your oxygen flow rate, right, to the max as you can go. So here, my regulator allows me to go up to 25, 25 liters per minute, and that's what I'm going to do. Now, the caveat to this is that I'm not giving them 25 liters per minute continuously. I'm only doing this for the time period that I want to do nitrogen washout and pre oxygenation So another concept that I want to emphasize, pre oxygenation and nitrogen washout is not the same thing. You may have a patient who has, let's say, 100% saturation, right, after I place them on a mask, but they do not have nitrogen washout. And you have another patient who has 85% saturation, right, but they have fully denitrogenated their lungs. So what is nitrogen washout? Nitrogen washout is obtained when you ventilate a patient, right, or a spontaneous breathing patient who is breathing for about three minutes with 100% oxygen or as high con oxygen as you could get them, and, or they take eight vital capacity breaths. And what we're doing is essentially replacing that stored nitrogen with 100% oxygen. And after three minutes or eight vital capacity breath where, where I fully inhale and exhale, I can fully denitrogen my patient. And then I will look at their pulse ox and I want to have the pulse ox as high as I can get before I intubate the patient. So nitrogen washout, three minutes or eight vital capacity breaths, right? And then I look at my pulse ox, right, to make sure it's above 95. For those patients who no matter what you do, do not exceed 95% saturation, even though you 
have placed them on a mask for three minutes. Those patients probably have shunt physiology, means they have like pneumonia or pulm uh, pulmonary edema, that even though they have perfusion to the lungs, right, that pneumonia or edema does not allow loading, right, of oxygen onto the blood. So they need a peep valve. They need to stand that alveoli open. And I'll have another video where I'll explain to you how this device works. So you basically connect a peep valve on your BVM. You dial in the peep. It goes from 5 to 20 centimeters of water pressure. And you will, again, perform this procedure for uh, three minutes. And this will take their saturation, if it was less than 95, to, uh, to the higher levels. So you can both pre oxygenate them and to do nitrogen washout. Again, those two concepts are not the same. So just to summarize, uh, simple face mask at 15 liters per minute gives you about 50% FiO2. Uh, a non rebreather mask, which is false non rebreather mask with a safety valve, gives you about 70% FiO2. And a true non rebreather mask, if the patient has good minute ventilation, gives you about 90% FiO2. And uh, BVM at 15 liters per minute will give you greater than 90, close to 100% uh, FiO2. Now, uh, in that study that I talked about, driver uh, used, they connected these masks uh, to a flow that was exceeding uh, 40 uh, liters per minute, and uh, non the mask was just as good as the BVM at providing uh, almost 100% FiO2 to pre the patient. So ideally, the best devices to employ to pre would be this device and this device. However, if you don't have this device and you don't have a peep valve, right, you can employ this device, run it at maximum flow rate to pre the patient. And I want to again emphasize, if you want to use this device, right, uh, to hold on the patient's face so that they get pre you need both a peep valve connected here and you need a nasal cannula that's running at 15 liters per minute to generate flows uh, to sustain that positive and expiratory pressure that the patient uh, is getting in order to pre-oxygenate them.